So why is XLM the best choice for 2025? And what's this million dollar plan that I tell you guys I have? Well, of course, I'm gonna divulge that today. And you know, I think it's an interesting topic because a lot of people do think that XRP is the better choice over XLM. Hey, why go with XLM when we have XRP over here that ultimately is the better pick because it's a higher market cap and more people talk about it, right? And I totally get that because, you know, we are a hive mentality type species, right? If everyone think something's good, chances are everyone's going to flock to it. And there's a whole psychology thing about that, the bandwagon effect and so on and so forth. But I definitely do think that people are misunderstood. And honestly, they have the wrong idea because believe it or not, XRP ain't going to make you much money in 2025, at least if everything plays out how I kind of think it will. Okay. And that's, I think the most common sort of outcome I can see happening here. So let me get into why XLM is the best choice in this case, most definitely put up against XRP. And then I'm going to tell you guys about my million dollar plan. All right. So let's begin this video with why XLM is the best 2025 choice. Okay. So let's get straight into it. I'll just fix my pen up and here we go. Okay. So the reason why I made this video was because I put out my God tier portfolio to make millions in the 2025 bull run about a week or so ago. And that was my portfolio. Okay. So I showed you guys what I'm holding and XRP was the last altcoin on that list. And so Hence, I had about 10 comments specifically asking me, Cone, why the hell? By the way, thank you for everyone for being genuinely nice about this. Why do you have XRP at only like 500 bucks invested? And why is it like last? And why did I say I wanted to get rid of it? Okay. And the reason was I was trying to take advantage of the pump with the whole lawsuit situation. And ultimately, I'm going to end up selling that position. So a lot of you guys were a bit concerned about that. And I get it, right? A lot of you love XRP. A lot of you have, again, fell into that bandwagon effect where everyone thinks that because everyone else is buying it, it has to be a good asset, right? So we have people like, I'm surprised XRP is so low on that list. You know, $500 in XRP at all? What are you talking about here? Did you miss the ship? We had a few people genuinely asking like, you know, why have you done this? Can I please get an answer? And this will answer that for you, okay? But the common, well, at least the most important question that I got out of all this, which is why I've left it last year, is why XLM over XRP? And this will most definitely silence everyone. Now I wanna say, for all you XRP lovers, for everyone in the XRP army thinking to yourselves, I'm going to slam this guy for whatever he's about to say. I want to say for the record here, I'm not pitting these two up against each other based on just their qualities and attributes alone, right? What I'm doing here is just looking at ROI because I know, don't tell me a lot of you guys aren't, oh, I'm in crypto just for the tech. Come on now. you, you Most of us are in crypto for the money, at least until 2025. I'm here for every which way, including money, but you have to understand, we need to make money in 2025. A lot of you think just because a project is good that you have to hold on to it because it's a good project. Guys, as I've said many times before, 2025 is a catalyst, is a leapfrog effect for 2030 and beyond. We make lots of money and then the rest in 2030 beyond will most likely be steadier gains on quality projects. Therefore, we can take our time with it, but we have to make the most amount of money here. And this is what I'm saying. You're getting the effects, the quality-ish of XRP in a smaller cap project. Therefore, the multiples are extremely high, okay? So again, they're pretty much almost the same sort of project, right? If we kind of break it down on a very, very zoomed out lens, right? They're both cross-border payments. The difference is that XLM focuses on peer-to-peer, U-to-I, or small institutional transfers, whereas XRP is kind of like large, you know, institution slash bank-to-bank transfers. You know, XRP is for-profit, XLM is not, and that actually might play into some of the things we'll talk about in a minute because XRP needs to sell tokens to make money. XLM isn't, again, trying to make a profit here. You know, XRP by far smashes XLM out of the water in terms of partners, you know, hundreds of large partners, big names, they've acquired companies before Medi-Cal. You know, network effects are in motion, exactly, you know what I'm saying? Because network effects are in motion, if you know what I mean. Because essentially, we have a large amount of quality institutions already in this network and more are wanting to come in because they can see this is the next evolution, right? On XLM side, we have just tens, if you will, of large players and so on and so forth. Well, at least orders of magnitudes less than XRP. Yet over here, both are 
you know, fully controlled essentially at this point in terms of the emissions of the token by the teams, okay? So again, they're very, very similar, at least in the same space, yet XRP is most definitely more evolved, but that is not my reasoning. Let me tell you exactly why. So my reasoning has absolutely nothing to do with how advanced XLM is versus XRP, only how advanced it is in its own niche, all right? Again, really specific niche here, peer-to-peer, -peer, okay? Plus, does it have the ability to outperform XRP in 2025? This is my reasoning, those two things, okay? Because after all, one thing a lot of people have to understand here is we're not talking about future beyond. Everyone's like, ah, XRP is going to a thousand bucks, a hundred bucks. We're not worrying about that, all right? That's not the argument. The argument is making money in 2025 as a leapfrog year. And my fundamental issue is a lot of people fall victim to the feeling of getting married to the altcoin because everyone says it's good, this bandwagon effect. So this often means they never assess the altcoin's explosive potential themselves and whether or not it matches their own personal return on investment targets and then most of the time at least i see it down below all the damn time people get upset when the old coin doesn't move look at the chart it hasn't moved it's a bad old coin i see it so many times that's because when, I, when you see those comments from people they don't have any sort of fundamental research into that project they're completely basing their opinion on it on the chart because they're following what people say and then they're married to that okay and i think again this is where a lot of people are with xrp because everyone said this quality because the connections there i'm not saying it's not i'm not saying that it isn't probably the most connected and most likely to be adopted cryptocurrency of them all beating everything and i honestly even think including bitcoin right however i am talking about multiples here because we are looking to make money again besides the whole tech part of crypto i think we're all in it for the tech as well this is a big life-changing situation here okay so my thing is when you miss the boat you miss the damn boat. I believe I've missed the explosive potential here. I saw one comment on the XRP video, at least in the video I mentioned on my portfolio with XRP, and someone said, you know, you've missed the boat. And he's right. He was 100% right, okay? I think at least for 2025, it's not an investment for me. I'm going to go over some of the stats in a second. It's going to blow your mind, okay? And how do I know this? Twofold. I use accurate and frequent price predictions, which I work back from to find buy-in levels to meet my minimum ROI goals, okay? And in this case, with XRP, it doesn't meet my ROI expectations, aka I want more multiples at a minimum out of the bull run for the projects I buy, and that sometimes means moving away from projects I'm interested in and then making the change into another project at that point, okay? So being a robot is key here. Don't let your emotions get involved, okay? It is what it is. So like me or like what I do, if those levels aren't reached, do not buy. Or if you do, don't complain with the result. I'm telling you right now, I don't want to hear I told you so is in the next bear market, all right? Number two, XLM has proven that it can leech gains from the XRP lawsuit. So XRP jumped 75% in 24 hours when we had that sort of wishy-washy news about the, the lawsuit you know, about a month or two ago. And XLM jumped 61% in 24 hours. So not as explosive, about 14% less but it did cap out to 70% over the next seven days, okay? Whereas XRP didn't really peak above that. So yes, it's proven it can lead from it and it definitely will in the future. So for an altcoin that's eight times smaller right now, that can be pretty damn powerful mixed with other factors like the powerful narrative, meme, and news upgrades that will most definitely come in 2025. So allow me to show you what I'm talking about. Now, I won't spend too much time and then we'll get into why it's a million dollar plan for what I'm talking about here. So over here, we have XLM and we have XRP. So we're talking about multiples in the market cap sense. So what would it look like if we 10X, 25X, and 50X the current market cap, okay, with the current circulating supply? Well, we'd get about 33.1 billion over here for XLM versus over here, $263 billion for XRP. That is more than the current Ethereum. That's only a 10X, guys, all right? And we haven't even factored in inflation predicted yet so we'll talk about that in a second here so what does this look like in terms of dollar amounts one dollar twenty over here for xlm four dollars ninety for xrp and you guys can see that for yourselves right so if we go in more 25x over here for xlm it's only an 82 billion market cap versus the 659 billion market cap that's almost like what bitcoin is right now and a 50x is only 165 billion for xlm which is actually 30 billion less than eth right now so it's less than eth and over here, 50x over here for XRP is 1.32 trillion, which is 300 billion more than the global current market cap. Now, if we factor in inflation, and yes, we always need to factor in inflation for anything, what we come up with is obviously less uh, potential price action, okay? So projected over here, 
I've used a 7.4% year-on-year inflation for both. That's more accurate with XLM based on the recent years. XRP is probably going to be even more. Recently, they, they dropped in a billion dollars. And as I said at the start of the video, the problem with XRP is they're for profit, meaning they're going to try to take money and dump more tokens on the market. Chances are XLM dumps you know tokens on the market. They release these tokens. They're most likely going to be absorbed by something over-the-counter trade, for example. So in that case, it's not going to affect the price on the open market, if that makes sense. So as you can see, it's going to probably be, and if not more for XRP, and definitely can be different for both. Again, both you know tokens hold both foundations or at least entities that run these projects own the rest of the tokens and so i do think that it can you know be wishy-washy here from a general standpoint but if we're being you know quite vague i do definitely think that as you can see here i mean it's quite crazy how fast these can get diluted right so over here a 50x can quickly turn into a 43x a 25x into a 22x of course this is because we're factoring in inflation okay and so over here it's a little bit less of course with xlm why well in addition to it being a 8x smaller market cap it's got half the supply and even if all those 50 billion tokens were to come out tomorrow it still in time will be less than what the circulating supply will be at a given point for xrp okay now in 2030 again with inflation as we can see here it just diminishes a whole heap more but it definitely hits a lot harder over here for xrp because as you can see over here we do have pretty much double the amount of tokens in circulation again this is talking about averages here for xrp all right so ultimately if xlm reached xrp's 10 times market cap so this if this was xlm we're talking about here it would be worth $8.80 in 2025 and 620 in 2030 therefore a 73x and a 68x so you can see essentially what i'm saying here is if XRP 10x in 2025 realistically be at 8.6x, it would be a 73x at the same market cap level for XLM, okay? Which is just insane. So you can see the reasoning here, okay? There are some contingencies. So the 2025 Borum will pretty much only have a 5 to 10 trillion dollar global market cap, which means that the chances that, you know, people would say, oh, XRP is going to 50x. Yeah, this looks reasonable to me, guys. It's not that will most definitely be nowhere near i mean look it definitely could depending on a few other things like you know xrp's lawsuit doesn't finalize doesn't it and global or us regulation framework so i guess if these two things finalize and let's say we have us or global you know frameworks in place for crypto and uh, obviously at that point i guess the xrp lawsuit will be finalized regardless then yeah i could definitely see something crazy like a 25x or a 50x happening but you can still only imagine what the hell will happen to its sister net, essentially XLM. It's gonna be a lot more multiples than that. And so this brings me to my million dollar plan, right? Now, channel OGs have probably seen this multiple times already, but I wanted to point it out for those of you who don't know it, because this is the true power of compounding. And this is why XLM far exceeds, in my opinion, XRP as a value, valuable investment for the 2025 bull run, specifically speaking here. 2030 and beyond doesn't really matter as much. Let me explain. If today, at today's prices, we bought $10,000 worth of XLM at 12 cents, right, it'd be 83,000 give or take tokens. So in the next bull run, let's just say we take those 83,000 tokens and we sell at an average of $1.50, right? We'd get $24,500 at the 13X. Pretty good, right? Well, let's say the next bear market, the lowest price it goes to is 50 cents, or at least on average 50 cents. And we just say, okay, with the $124,500, we got some bills to pay. We'll keep 24.5K. We'll reinvest $100,000 and we'll buy $200,000 worth of XLM. Again, that's simple maths, right? Well, we take that $200,000 and then in 2030, again, it doesn't specifically matter here we use XLM in this case, we can do any project, but I still think XLM will have explosive returns at this point. Let's just say we then sell at $15 on average, okay? So I think over time, yes, it can most definitely 10X its max, or at least when we sell okay and in this case we get three million dollars so we're only 43 xing in total over here across the years again we're leapfrogging here right because 2025 isn't a year where it's the bill and end all all right 2025 a lot of people get this wrong it's again a catalyst it's that stepping stone for what's to come i guarantee you right now i don't care what happens i'm selling all my cryptocurrency in 2025 all right i'm not holding any of it because it doesn't matter what price you get in at it doesn't matter how much tokens you buy at that price, or at least how many tokens you get acquired for how much money you invest at that price, should I say. Okay, so what I'm doing in at this point is reinvesting, but also taking a chunk of the money out that I make in the 2025 bull run, reinvesting into like, you know, stocks or typical equity markets, you know, real estate, so on and so forth. But as I mentioned over here, you know, reinvesting a sizable amount into, you know, sustainable long-term projects like XLM. Hence why I've got the explanation on here, right? So 
we can then, because I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, Kyron, you know, Exelon is not going to get a 15 bucks in 2030. Blah, blah, blah. It's not going to even go $1.50 in 2025. Well, here we go. All right, here we go. Let me explain a couple of things to you. I've got two more examples down here. And don't worry, I'll make this shit available for all of you guys down below in the description. But same situation plays out. Instead of selling at $1.50, we sell at $1.20 or $1. Okay, the exact same situation plays out. Here's our new, you know, our money out, much money we've made essentially. And what I've done over here is also not just reduce how much money we essentially, you know, earn over here in terms of bringing the average sell down. Okay, over here it's only an 8x, which is very obtainable in my opinion. But what I've done is stuck with the saving of the $24,500. I'm not making it proportionate to how much money we make over here. I'm still taking out $24,500. So even if we save $24,500 at the reduced amount we make, and therefore we're reinvesting a lot less, as you can see, the amount of tokens we can now acquire over here. What I'm also doing is reducing when we sell in 2030. Instead of selling at $15 on average, we sell at $12 and $8. Extreme. So what we're doing is we're not just reducing when we're selling, we're also uh, reducing how much money we're reinvesting as well, substantially, okay? So as you can see, 1.8 million and 936,000 uh, come out of it. And so, you know, a 34 and a 24X respectively over here. And you can see just how much damage you can do with time. And yes, you can argue XRP can have a similar situation play out, of course, but it will not find the multiples because remember, selling at $1.50 over here is very obtainable when we come back to the potential 25X or at least 23x realistically including inflation over here it can't it's a two dollar 80 token guys and we're talking about selling at one dollar fifty okay so i'm telling you right now it's much more realistic and explosive for xlm to make this a reality than it is for xrp and sometimes you do have to have a multi-year okay look a seven-year outlook on investing is extremely small like if you're worried about seven years you're either 90 plus years old or you're an extremely impatient person so with that being said, guys, that is my reasoning as to why I have chosen XLM over XRP. It's quite simple. It's quite simple. Uh, you know, we can, you know, get into the tokenomics of things and stuff like that. But ultimately, XLM beats in terms of the size. It's 8x smaller market cap. And also, it's 2x smaller in terms of the circulating supply as well. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Talk to you all soon. Take care. Bye.